Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Harriet, one of the elders here. And on behalf of the leadership here, we want to send a huge welcome to you all and on this really exciting occasion, the inauguration of Simon Evans White as an accredited minister to the Baptist Union and the abduction of the Reverend Simon Evans White and a minister of God's Church here at Horton. A special welcome to Simon, Rachel, Daniel, Finn, and River and to the very service you have, we've had in this building. And not only is it Simon's first service in our church, it's the first service we've had here in over 16 months. The first service we've ever had on Zoom from the church building, and the first time we've ever combined a live service with one online. Many thanks to Simon and Deacons for all the work that they've done <coughs> to ensure that this has happened today. I want to welcome Simon's parents, Ray and Rita. Welcome. And we're here today, and Rachel's father, Dennis, who is on Zoom. Uh, welcome to the, the um, people behind me, Stuart Davison, our regional minister from the South East Baptist Association, and he'll be our presiding minister today. Dr. Helen Payton from Bristol uh, Baptist College will be bringing us God's word. Reverend Fiona Gill, who we all know, who's from Bride Baptist Church, He's been our very patient, very wise, and extremely supportive moderator over the last two years. To the Reverend Tim Landon, who is here on behalf of Simon Assembly Church, and to um, somebody else, uh, and, and also, <laughs> 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 you all know who's our church secretary. Um, and of course, all of Simon's family and friends who. Um, Travel this journey with him uh, and have supported him along the way. It's wonderful to welcome so many of you on Zoom Somerset, Surrey, Bristol, Gloucester, Southampton, and of course, a very, very, very special welcome to our church family in New York, whether you're here in person, whether you're on Zoom, or whether you're watching this on DVD or listening on C to CD later on. So, welcome. Up on practical matters. Before we start, for those of you who are here, uh, just to let you know if the service is being recorded. Um, however, it will only be the people at the front here who will be seeing. Uh, during the service, please be remember seated in your group, group to six. Let's, of course, you need the toilets, which are situated, you can go into my air hose just there. Uh, um, <laughs> the door at the back, turn left, there's a toilet there. Through the store, uh, there's a toilet on the right. Through the day doors and other such toilets as well. At the end of the service, could you remain seated until the stewards um, give you permission to leave? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you can chat in the car park, hopefully, if the rain stops. Um, but please remember social distancing. One of the verses that's been with us over the last year is Isaiah 43 19. It was also this verse that Simon sent to us when he first started. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and springs in the wasteland. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that you have carried your church here at Horton on the eagle's wings, and Simon and his family, and have brought us together in your divine timing. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come, pour your spirit on Simon, Rachel, Daniel, Finn, and River, and this, your church at Horton, so that we may seek together to be your right house on the top of this hill, drawing others, drawing the disciples, <coughs> drawing those who are broken hearted, the poor spirit, those who are imprisoned by and give us and anxieties. Those who are sick and body in mind, and all those who hunger for your presence in their lives. For your spiritual sign in this church, so that we may embrace and be bold in following you to do exciting new things in this church and community. For your spirit on all of those today, bring your joy, love, peace, and hope. <coughs> Amen. <laughs> and I'll hand you over to the big meeting who's been a pleasure today. Thank you. <coughs> Hello everyone. 
It's lovely to be back here. We're so excited to be back here, like, especially in Very excited. Um, and I've picked a psalm to start with today. This Psalm 100 and it says this Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. <coughs> Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. The Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues for all generations. And let's just have a, a quick prayer before, before we sing. Lord, we thank you that we are here this afternoon to be able to worship you and to bring Simon and his family into the membership and the pastor of this church. I just pray um, that you'll be with us now, that you'll be blessed by our worship this afternoon. Amen. Now, having said that, and having said some joyful songs, those of you who are here can mumble into your masks, I'm afraid. That's all we're allowed to do. Those on Zoom, you can go for it. You can sing a chocolate voice, but please make sure you're on mute. Because otherwise, it will be really just a child in your private chat up the wall. So you enjoy it and uh, you enjoy it again in a slightly different way. And the first song is Bless the Lord and Myself. These are all songs which start with Chinese and Bible, which has all the songs today. <laughs>
sing this together, hum this together, mouth this together, <laughs> but mean the words. Read the words on the, on the screen and mean the words. Okay, he said, Mum, what made you decide to be a minister? Well, the boy replied, I have to go to church on Sunday anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> God brings us to this day. We are met together in the name of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
to ordain Simon Evans White to the office and work of a Christian minister. We believe God called Simon to serve as a pastor, and today we acknowledge and celebrate that call. Setting him apart with prayer for the service and purposes of God. All God's people are called to ministry. All who are baptized into Jesus Christ and have received the Holy Spirit are called to serve our Lord Jesus Christ and one another in the fellowship of the church and in all that they do. God gives gifts to all, so that like a body, all may share in the purposes of God. For the world which God has made and for which Jesus Christ has died. All are called to be disciples. All are called to be servants of God in Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yet, God calls some to servant leadership in the church. And these are to be honoured among us. None may take this office upon themselves. Today, we acknowledge our dependence upon <coughs> God and seek to do His will. We have sought God's guidance and prayerfully tested the calling of Simon within both the local and the wider church. Now we gather in the name of Jesus Christ to ordain Simon as a Christian minister and to seek God's blessing through the power and graces of the Holy Spirit. But a day like this doesn't just happen. There's a story to be told that brings us to this moment. And we're going to take the moment now to hear that story. And the first part of that story is going to be told us by Simon himself. Simon. Thanks, Stuart. I hope I can never be accused of being grown up. That would be, <laughs> that would be counter to everything I've done throughout most of my life. If you'd stopped me on the street a few years ago and told me that I would be standing here today, uh, in front of this group of people, both in person, on Zoom, and elsewhere in the world, giving not only a, an account of my Christian faith, but of how God had called me to serve him, that this day would mark the moment I was ordained into ministry within the Baptist Union, and that I would be serving as a minister of a church, I would have probably laughed at you, or maybe had a few choice words to share with you, and certainly I would have wondered where you would escape from and how we could get you back there as quickly as possible. As much as I am a fan of fantastic fiction, even I wouldn't have been able to indulge quite such a suspension of disbelief. Yet I've discovered that God, God takes great delight in confounding our expectations and our self-beliefs, and an equal delight in calling out the most unlikely and unusual of people to serve him. Now, I didn't grow up as a believer, not in God, at any rate. Faith was something I was aware of, uh, but not something I had, at least not in any real Christian sense. As a child, I was enthralled at the stories of the great biblical figures, Noah and his ark, Daniel in the lion's den, Samson in his mighty strength and awesome hairdo. Jesus, too, was fascinating. And the stories of his life featured prominently in school assemblies, punctuated by rousing renditions of give me oil in my lamp, or he's got the whole world in his hands, or my personal favourite, when a knight won his spurs. What a banger that was. <laughs> All too soon though, childhood enthusiasm gave way to teenage angst, youthful arrogance, and eventually the onset of Gen X cynicism. The stories were just stories. The hymns were a nostalgic reminder of those school days, and my faith, such as it was, found its locus elsewhere. Life happened, as it tends to do, and I grew up, and I grew further away from God. To be clear, I didn't have posters of Richard Dawkins adorning my bedroom, or a shelf of Christopher Hitchens books, but my opinion of church, 
of Jesus and of the people who claimed to follow him was not the highest. I wasn't an out and out atheist. But I was absolutely, certainly, completely, definitely, and utterly not a Christian, and there was no way I was ever going to change my stance on that. No way. Not ever. So to be completely honest, it came as a bit of a surprise to me when I was sat watching my wife Rachel in the production of Jesus Christ Superstar at Minehead Methodist Church, which I just remember Tim was also in. And, uh, and God was there. And God revealed himself to me and, and called me home. As the spirit broke into my life that evening, I just knew that Jesus was real. That he had come to earth and that he had died for me. That he had risen again and was now in the heavenly realms. That God was the author of all things. And that despite my consistent denial of him time and time and time again, he was inviting me, beckoning me into his kingdom into his family. I went into the church that day of sin, and I left a believer. God was real. The Bible was true, and Jesus was, and he's my saviour. My life has changed an awful lot since that day. Gone is my selfishness, though maybe at times I could do with a little improvement in that area. Gone is my cynicism. Again, probably could do with a little improvement on that one as well. But God is all my anger and hurt, all my hatred and my angst. And in its place, God has brought me healing, wholeness, restoration, and peace. You'd have thought that would be enough for you, wouldn't you? More than enough. Except God, it turns out, wasn't quite done with me yet. It wasn't long after I was baptized again, which Tim did, that I had a strong sense that he, God, was calling me into something else, something deeper, something bigger than I was. It was a life-changing invitation to service and ministry for him. Now at first, I thought that this might be as a worship leader. After all, God had blessed me with a small amount of musical ability and a little bit of experience, and it was through music that he reached me, that he finally broke through my opposition and barriers. Fortunately, for all who've heard my uh, <clears throat> singing voice, that was not the calling he was issuing to me. There's a tradition in Baptist circles that anything vaguely witty and pithy can attribute to Charles Spurgeon, whether it was actually Charles Spurgeon himself who said it or not. But in this case, it really was Spurgeon who said this. If you can do anything else, do it. If you can stay out of the ministry, stay out of the ministry. I really had no choice. God gave me no choice. There were no other options. There was nothing else I could do. Not another path I could take. Not if I wanted to stay faithful and obedient. He was calling to me to ministry, and that was that. Now, at this point, many of these stories... Uh, that I've heard of these people talk about how they fought God on this, how they resisted it, how they really didn't want to be a minister. I can't, I can't lie, I really didn't fight God on that one at all. What burned within me was a desire to give myself to God completely, to serve him all the days of my life, to, to borrow from the great apostle Paul, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel, for if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But it is not of my own will. I am still entrusted with stewardship. The account of testing that call to ministry and the calling to express that ministry here at Halton, you are about to hear from others who have been involved in the process, those who have prayed, those who have sought God's will, those who have shared the journey. And as this testimony is risking becoming almost as long as one of my sermons, I will leave telling that story to them. Throughout the journey, though, through the highs and there have been many, and the lows and there have been a few of those, through the triumphs and the trials, the celebrations and the tears, I have had so much support, encouragement, friendship, wisdom, and the help of so many others. Each has played a part and blessed me more than I can adequately say. And to draw another phrase from Baptist history, can you tell that was the most, the last module I studied at college? <laughs> There's an old saying 
which I'm fond of, and I bring up pretty much whenever I can shoehorn it into a situation. Baptists are a people who walk together and watch over one another. There have been pilgrims who have shared this journey with me, saints who have watched over me without whom I would not be here today, too many to name, but all of whom have blessed me in so many ways. And through it all, of course, there's been God. As I look back over the last, let's call them 20, let's call them two decades plus of my life, I can see his hand at work. I can see where he's prodded me, where he's guided me, where he's been directing action and calling the shots. I can see where he's lifted and supported me, where he's comforted and sustained me, where he gently steered me, and frankly, where he's dragged me sometimes kicking and screaming to where he needs me to be. This is all because of him. And I know it's only in his power and by his grace that I stand here today. And it is for his glory and his purposes that I step out in faith and obedience, trusting that the good God who has led me this far will indeed continue to lead. So I hope you'll join me with my prayer for wisdom. I'm going to need a lot of that. Courage, strength, and the humility to remember exactly who I serve. So God, here I stand, ready and willing, bring it on. When it comes to ordination, I don't just get to make a choice and think, oh, there's a nice guy, he looks like he'll be a good minister. The story does have to be taken one stage at a time. And even uh, the Simons of Field Court, that point has to be acknowledged in a much wider way. And first of all, the church that knows him best has to send him to be trained, acknowledging that calling upon his life. And so we're going to hear from Tim now. <laughs> It was just over six years ago that I met Simon for the first time. I didn't really connect that the Rachel that I was rehearsing at the Jesus Christ Superstar musical was actually connected with this guy initially because we just had this phone call to the church office saying, somebody's interested in playing the organ. He was touching for business, bless him. <laughs> he was touching for business to see if he could support the pens in between everything. He was already doing a few other churches, poor things. Um, but the reality is that Simon and I met, and we clicked pretty quickly uh, in friendship, and it was just an amazing period of time. Simon's already alluded to the way in which he was converting quite quickly, shall we say, uh, and through, it was quite a moving performance by Jesus Christ Superstar. I think overall we had about 2,000 people through to actually watch that show, and it was an opportunity to present Jesus in a different way, and it touched many people, and most notably for today, it touched Simon. It was interesting because when he came inquiring about organ play, I uh, picked up that maybe it would be good for him to come to church. I tend to do that anyway. Um, so I invited him to come, and, and to my big surprise, they came to a whole family, a whole bunch. And they didn't go. They sort of stuck. And it was joyous to welcome him to the life of my Baptist church where I was minister at that time. Uh, bizarre story, it was my home church, it was my sending church into ministry as well. So I think Simon is the third person who's been sort of sent into ministry from my home Baptist church in the last four decades. Uh, so it's not that good record, so keep, keep sending them. Um, but there was real joy as they came to be part of the family at my head. And Simon found ways to engage and be involved. So he very quickly became part of the music side of the church, where he heard a little bit of his background in the musical theatre. 
uh, and it's just wonderful to have the fresh fields and waters, um, but also to have this beginning of his faith being communicated in how he gave worship. And so we gave worship, we did a few more musicals, we, we did pantos, but we were going to place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were involved in helping to set up the gospel choir, which was really good fun for those few years too. Um, and Simon became part of the pastoral team uh, when I was setting up some pastoral distinct systems, and so became part of that. And the church, in this journey with Simon, could see this gradual moving that God was placing in his heart and mind towards ministry. So when Simon murmured to me one day that he was feeling called into ministry, I didn't laugh. I was really good. I actually did a little bit of, are you really sure? And all that sort of stuff. But no, I wanted to be on the side. I could see very quickly that God was calling this man to serve him. And so we journeyed with him, gave opportunities then to preach at the church, and uh, we came to that point, as happens within these processes, where as a church, at Mind and Baptist Church, the family recognised this calling on Simon's life. And so, as they say, the rest is history up to this point. Now we're entering into a new part. Simon's life of service, and we commend him from Mind Me Baptist, and I commend him to Fred and someone's journey with him through times of restoration. Simon will no doubt share other times the way in which God has restored him in so many ways. And today we rejoice that God has now called him to hold the Baptist Church. So we commend you to with love. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. It's nice to see Tim again because, of course, he used to be on this patch before he, he drove off on his motorbike down <laughs> to the West Country. But in the handing of the minister over, or respecting minister over, it has to be the wider family that then recognise that call. In this case, it was the South West Baptist Association. And I think we're now going to hear from Carl. Hi, my name is Carl Smethurst and I'm Regional Minister for the South West Baptist Association. So sorry I can't be with you in person today. We, too, as an association, were charged with testing Simon's call to ministry alongside his sending church. And we did that through interview and commendation and through prayer. Well, I'm delighted to report to you today that we believe as an association that Simon is called to ministry amongst the Baptist Union of Great Britain. And we warmly commend him to you on this most important day. Simon, it seems like no time ago since you and I were stood in the kitchen of the sanctuary, watch it, Baptist churches community building that is um, in West Somerset, talking about the very first thoughts that you had of being called to, to ministry. Well, much has changed for us both since then. And here you stand at this significant point in your journey of ministry today. We want to pray God's abundant blessings on you and on your family as you commence this new phase of your lives together. God bless you. The gift of interpretation. That was a yes. <laughs> um, um, it's obviously the, the, what they lack in sound in the West Country, they make up for with nicer weather than we <laughs> um, But then the association, on behalf of the union, hands that person on to a college. And that's when it gets really scary. And so <laughs> Helen's going to come and tell us what happened on that bit. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
Normally, we have students with us for three or four years um, preparing for um, Christian ministry. Simon was with us a little longer. <laughs> he came first um, as part of our Saturday program, which was we call uh, Prepare, Feed, to Sustain. And it was my privilege at that time to be looking after that program. It's kind of access level theological study. And Simon is a very enthusiastic member of that group for um, two or one. Did you finish the entire three years, Simon? Just two. Two years. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then at that point, he has gone through the Minister of Recognition, which Carl was just mouthing to you about. Um, and then we were pleased to welcome him as a ministerial for the students as well. So he then came to do uh, ministerial formation and formal academic study. Simon has been a hugely valued member of the college community. He has become a friend to all of us. He was so well respected and loved among his peers that he was elected student president. Simon has blessed the college family with his wisdom um, and with his creativity. Music not being the only one, anything, but social music being a very significant part of the way that he has blessed the college community. He's entered fully into the worshipping life of the college as well, of course, as his studies. We are delighted to affirm that God's call upon his life. So let me say the formal bit that the college representative is supposed to say, which I am delighted to say and wholeheartedly mean. Simon Evans White has prepared for Christian ministry through a life of study, prayer, and service. He has studied the scriptures and the faith of the Christian church, and he has applied himself to the practice of ministry. Sharing in the church's fellowship and witness, he has been equipped for Christian ministry as a partner, and we now commend him to the churches. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, we Baptists are a peculiar people. Um, you may already gather that. Um, but the last part of the puzzle has to be that the church calls the minister. Now, in some denominations, the denomination decides, right, we will obey you. And then we'll send you to a church. We do it the other way around. Because if there isn't a church prepared to take this person on, then we're not prepared to ordain them. And uh, that's where Holton come into the story. Edwin, you didn't get introduced earlier, but it's a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> it's good to be back as well. And if, if you haven't noticed, we have a new lectern. We've <laughs> kept it a whole year and a half, put in secret. <laughs> when the leadership asked me to say a few words, I, my first response was, well, do you want the long one or the short one? And I'm sure most of you know the answer is the short one. <laughs> most of it's already been covered, which is wonderful. So excuse me, take a glass of stuff. Um, just like to share with you a lot. It's happened over the last few years. It was early in 2019 that our previous minister, Matt Carter, indicated that he would be leaving us later in the year. This kicked in our renewed contact with Stuart, um, seeking his advice and guidance. The church started prayer meetings to seek God's guidance for the way ahead. From this came our pastoral vacancy team and our contact uh, via Stuart again for our moderator, yeah. Um, we were encouraged to look at our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, and our threats as a church. This helped us to formulate our church profile, which was sent to Stuart for him to share with the other regional leaders. This information would then hopefully assist them as the ministers seeking a move. Over the coming months, Including the COVID kicking, we received a dozen or so possibilities, but none seemed to fit our profile. That was until November last year, when we received SE01. Remember? SE01, which turned out to be signed. The leadership team were unanimous that we should follow up this contact. This occurred via Zoom in December and a preach in January, followed by feedback from the members and others that we should proceed to a question and answer session 
with Simon and Rachel. The outcome was that we should seek, ask Simon to preach with a view. This occurred in March. Then the members voted to proceed to call in Simon to be our next minister. Simon agreed that he would accept that offer. He and the family moved in June. During the many months of waiting, the elders regularly called us to be involved in praying for the right person to be appointed. We believe God has heard our prayers and our people. So that's the story told to date. A new chapter now opens in the story here at Halton. We have heard how the call to Christian ministry has been heard by Simon and confirmed by those charged with testing it. Simon will now make promises to exercise that ministry with faithfulness and love. Simon, come and join me. Okay. I'm glad you got good print. <laughs> <laughs> My brother, do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and do you confess Jesus Christ as your Saviour and Lord? I do. This is the God in whom I trust. The call of Jesus Christ to all who follow him is to go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Will you proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ through your words and deeds, and seek the coming kingdom of God. They will, for Jesus Christ has called me. Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep. Will you serve and lead the people of God through pastoral care, gentle nurture, and faithful teaching? Will you set before them the whole counsel of God, serving after the pattern of Jesus himself, the good shepherd, whose people they are? Abiding in the love of God, I will. For the Apostle writes, set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, faith and unity. Will you endeavour to lead a godly life, setting an example to all people, especially the flock of Christ committed to your care? And will you be diligent in prayer, in reading the scriptures, and in all studies that will deepen your faith and ministry. With the Lord's help, I will. For the Apostle writes, but let us make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Will you exercise your ministry in all humility and patience, serving the people of God and not lording it over them, welcoming the stranger, and building up the body of Christ until we all come to the unity of the truth and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, measured by nothing less than the full stature of Christ. In the power of the Holy Spirit, I will. Jesus challenged his disciples to leave self behind, take up a cross and follow him. Will you follow Christ wherever he leads you, remaining faithful to your Lord until he comes or calls you to your heavenly rest. With the Lord's help, I will. May the God of peace keep you steadfast in the vows that you have made, living and serving in the power of the Holy Spirit as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm going to stand to one side now. As members of the Baptist Union of Great Britain, we make this declaration of principle. The basis of this union is, firstly, that our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, is the sole and absolute authority in all matters pertaining to faith and practice, as revealed in the Holy Scriptures, and that each church has liberty, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, to interpret and administer his laws. Secondly, Christian baptism is the immersion in water 
into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, of those who have professed repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins according to the Scriptures, was buried, and rose again on the third day. And thirdly, that it is the duty of every disciple to bear personal witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ and to take part in the evangelization of the world. Are you in wholehearted agreement with that declaration of principle of the Baptist Union of Great Britain? I am. In that case, we're going to pray for you now. of the church is to lay hands on at this point. And so, but if you wish to take heart and feel that you are part of this, then stretch out your hands towards, um, towards Simon now as we pray for him. I don't think you want the mic. Father, we rejoice in this day. We thank you, Lord, for the hope and the affirmation of your grace that we have heard of in the story of Simon coming to you and his story of coming to this place. In this day, Father, we pray for your power and your mercy, your forgiveness and your love to overshadow every aspect of your silence. From this day forward, as he takes on this responsibility and this change of direction in his life, we thank you, Lord, that you are his saviour, you are his leader, you are his king, you are the one who does it. We pray, Father, for your grace to overshadow you that peace, and that you would lead him with security and confidence into the new things that you are asking him to be, to do, and to encourage others in in the coming years. In Jesus' name. Send your Holy Spirit, your ultimate way, in a new way upon Simon today, and remain with him. May he keep the promises he has made. Give him the grace and the strength to be faithful, wise, and servant hearted. May he know the joy of fruitful ministry. Keep him in the faith. Keep him in the service for your kingdom for his life. Amen. Father, we thank you again for your goodness to us. We thank you for the main part that you played and that for you to come to this place. We thank you for your grace and your mercy upon your people. But now we pray a special blessing upon your servant Simon. Mm-hmm. And give him Lord with your spirit, spirit of love, spirit of compassion, spirit of understanding, the spirit to open your word to us. Mm-hmm. Feed us week by week, but also to feed him. And bless him and his family. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the journey that you have brought Simon on and the journey that you have taken Paul to. And Lord, we thank you that uh, their profiles match so beautifully and that this appears to be uh, a really good partner. And we pray, Lord, right now that you would. Minister to him by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would minister him to the wisdom that he has already said that he knows he will need in the days ahead. Pray that you would fill him with that wisdom. We pray that you would give him all the graces of ministry that he will need for the days ahead, and that he and Rachel and the boys will be a real blessing to Autumn, and that Autumn will also be a blessing to them. And, uh, 
Lord, we just ask for your continued blessing upon the whole ministry and the years ahead. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for bringing Simon, Rachel, Daniel, and Rebecca again to us here at Walton. I thank you for the journey that we've been on and the journey that he's been on. I thank you that we have come to this point today. I pray all for our well pouring out of your spirit on Simon and this church. For your spirit on Rachel and the boys. Lord, I pray for a real spirit of creativity in the work that you have planned for him in his church. Help us to step out of the boat and give him, empower him to empower us as his church, as your church, to go and be your disciples to go and reach out to our community, to touch the lives of those in our community. Here we are, Lord. Send us. Father God, we give you all the glory, all the thanks for this beautiful family that you have brought to Carlton. We, like Simon, have been on our journey. And we thank you for bringing us to this part today. And I will the rest of the people still come. Request that you fill this man to overflowing with your love, your compassion. We thank you for his obedience. He's coming to this point and serving you. May we, the people of Fulton, stand beside him. We thank you, Father God, for your gracious, gracious love of this man to come back. And as we go forward, we really need to step out of the boat together. And Simon, one went before you 2,000 years ago, same name. Yes. Yeah. One who was a bit of a wild card. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, in the hands of Jesus, the testimony of Simon was to become a rock okay. for countless people. Yeah. And so we pray for you, Simon, for that same touch of Jesus to make you everything that we want you to be. But your testimony will be a rock for many in the days, the months, and the years ahead. For the glory of his name. Amen. Amen. Son. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we declare you, Simon Evans White, to be ordained a minister in the Church of Jesus Christ and commissioned for ministry within the Baptist Union of Great Britain. Seek the kingdom of God. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life might bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Amen. Good done. <laughs> This is the living word of God. Words to encourage the weak, to restore the lost, and build up the body of Christ. Read them and teach them. Proclaim the gospel of Christ, that the people of God may be a gospel. Simon, the Lord bless you and keep you. The 
Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hello, my name's Megan Butler. Um, Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 8. In the, year that, in the year that King Uzias died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him he stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And, no one, and one called to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the fresh threshold shook, and the voice of him called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one seraphim flew to me, having him in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20 says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain of which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and, and behold, I am always with you to the end of the age. And Helen, I think Helen's going to come and speak to us, so just call to us, let's pray for her. Father God, uh, thank you for this incredible day. I want to pray as Helen comes and speaks to us now, Lord, that you will bless her and anoint her and open up our hearts to hear from you. Amen. Thank you very much. Well, I wonder if any elements of Isaiah's call resonate with you, Simon. It's a story of a man with no lofty ambitions. He was living in a time of great national difficulty. He's an ordinary man who probably just plans a quiet life for himself. To keep his head down, he can out of trouble. But God interrupts his plans, and trouble comes looking for him. Make no mistake about it, this is no polite tap on the shoulder. This is no gradual dawning of a sense of call. There's no gentle ease in. This is like driving into a crash barrier at 100 miles an hour. It's like being hit by a juggernaut. I saw the Lord. A sentence heavy with understatement. Because what a sight it is. Suddenly, without so much as a by your leave, Isaiah is plunged into the throne room of heaven. A sight too bright for human eyes. A weight of glory he could feel. And what he beholds reduces him to a gibbering mess. Before the beauty and grace of the Lord, he understands his own clumsiness. His limbs are heavy, his words are gauche. Before the unsearchable wisdom of eternity, he grasps his own folly. He knows nothing. He understands nothing. If you'd asked him yesterday if he could be used by God, he'd have laughed and said, no. And now he really knows his own happiness. And yesterday's laughter seems childlike in its naivety. But that sense of gaucheness, of ignorance, is nothing compared to the appalling, sudden awareness of his own sinfulness. Here before the blazing brightness of the Lord, there is no one to hide. Before the searing holiness that he suddenly confronts him, he knows his guilt in a new, unbearable way. 
and shame overwhelms him. Woe is me. I'm undone. Coals from the altar touched to his lips. God's mercy is severe, his remedy is serious. But with it comes lightning of Isaiah's burden of guilt. But relief doesn't last for long because from the throne comes a question Who will go for me? Whom shall I send? Out of the glory comes the call, and he knows it must be him. And through blistered lips, he stutters his willingness. Blinking in the undimmed light, he offers himself. How can it be that God would employ the folly of a man? Why would God slope his purpose and bend his will to human limitations? But unbelievable as it seems, it is true. He is called to serve the Lord, to go where God sends him, and to speak what God gives him. It is a great and terrible call. A call to stand alone. A call to bear the words of God himself. Imagine the weight of that. A call to speak even if no one listens. Imagine the loneliness of that. A call to testify truthfully in a world of lies. Imagine the terror of that. Does any of that resonate with you, Simon? <laughs> I suspect it does, and so it should. Because if your knees don't knock from time to time at the honour and gravity of your call, you have failed to understand it. If you are smitten from time to time by the knowledge of your own sinfulness and your inadequacy, you have forgotten yourself. You have promised to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ through your words and deeds. That is an awesome promise. You have vowed that you, living with sinful lips among people of sinful lips, will set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith and purity. Don't ever lose a sense of the responsibility you have bound yourself to. Don't ever slip back to the days before you, like Isaiah, saw the Lord. Don't forget his warning. Don't forget the enormity of your sin and the wonder of his mercy. If your lips falter from time to time, that is all well and good. Live with the knowledge of your inadequacy and lean instead upon the one who has called you and will Now there's another story in the Bible rather like Isaiah's. We didn't read it this afternoon, but most of you will probably be familiar with it, and I know that Simon will know it. It's the story of another man who is transported into the throne room of heaven. And like Isaiah, he falls on his face before the glory and the majesty that he beholds. And as this man watches, heaven once again appeals for someone who will do the will of God. But this time the task is different. It's no mere prophet who is required. This time the task is to open the scroll of the will of God, to enact his will upon the earth, to bring God's kingdom finally and fully. And so the question rings out through heaven and earth, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And our reporter, the one who's written it down for us in our scriptures, watches and waits. And the question drops into the echo of world. Heaven and earth is silent. There is no volunteer because there can be no volunteer for this task. Because nobody is worthy for this task. On earth, nobody is found to be pure enough, noble enough, godly enough. Nor can any being in heaven presume to take it on. And so the watcher weeps and weeps as hope drains away. Nobody can enact God's will on earth. The kingdom will not come. And so the watcher weeps in despair. 
but wait. Someone has been found who is worthy. Just one. A lion, no, a lamb. The one who was slain, who shed his own blood like a sacrifice of lamb, and thereby conquered like a kingly lion. And all heaven erupts in praise at the one who has stepped forward, saying, you are worthy to open the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Thanks be to God, there is a Redeemer. Yes, there is a Redeemer, and Simon, it is not you. <laughs> Saving God's people is his work, not yours. Bringing in God's kingdom is his work, not yours. Building up the church is his work, not yours. He is worthy, and you are not. Never forget that. Never confuse the task of ministry with the task of being the Redeemer. <coughs> you are called to speak the truth. It is the Spirit who will apply it to the hearts that he has prepared. You are called to love and serve God's people. It is the Spirit who will strengthen them as disciples. You are called to lead a congregation. It is the Spirit who will build up this church. Knowing that you are not the Redeemer should lift from you the crushing weight of the task that you have said yes to. And it should also remove from you the right to self-congratulation. When your ministry flourishes, that is the work of the Spirit alone. And this means that your first and last priority, your most urgent and your most pressing task, is prayer. But we heard a different call story just now, and I wonder if elements of that one resonate with you as well, Simon. This call is quite different from Isaiah's. There's nothing sudden or dramatic about it. It's about a group of friends who have travelled together with the Master. For three years, they have stumbled after him, slowly growing in understanding, always three steps forward and two steps back. For three years they have enjoyed his company. They have shared banquets with him and split their last crusts with him. They have climbed hills together and plunged and valleys together. They have all laughed and they have all cried. They have shared glory and despair. They have seen him heal people and even, haltingly, nervously, heal the people themselves. They've learned a little of what it takes to bind up a broken heart. They've made their first faltering attempts to bring good news to the poor. They've made plenty of mistakes along the way. They've tried to protect him from the crowds, but his heart was far more open than they realised. They've tried to dissuade him from his task, which was beyond the scope of their narrow imagination. They fought with each other, while he was reaching out in love to untouchables. But slowly, slowly, they have been shaped in the likeness of the Master. And this call comes after three years of such in-person coaching, sometimes painful, often tiring, occasionally exhilarating, frequently bewildering, gritty, real, and grounded, with calloused feet and sunburnt skin, with dirty hands and empty and the people who have now emerged are not yet fully formed. They're not yet fully in the likeness of the Master, but they're a little more like him than they were a while ago. They're not yet complete in understanding, but they are a little wiser than they were at the start. They're not yet without doubts, but they've had enough encounters with the risen Lord to sustain them through their misgivings. They're not yet without fear, but while he is with them, their fears are on hold. So people like this that the Master calls. So any of that resonate with you, Simon? Does any of that resonate with you, Holton Baptist Church? Because this time, God is not calling for a lone ranger. 
as the Lord returns to heaven with his promises and charge still ringing in their ears, that little group of disciples stumbles back down the mountain. And they still have questions. And they still have doubts. And there is so much that they still don't know or understand. There are mistakes ahead. They are still sinful, fallible people. They know they're forgiven, but they also know they are not yet sorted. And they will wait for the Spirit as the Master has instructed them. And then, in the power of the Spirit, they will gradually, haltingly, miraculously begin to build his church. Some among the churches are set apart to serve and lead in what we call ordained ministry. We honour them and we thank God for them. But all are called to ministry in the church and in the world. It is disciples that Jesus commands to go and make disciples. He's not looking for superstars. The Spirit is poured out on all. The charge is placed upon all. This is the work of a team, not of one star player. So go, Simon and Autumn Baptist Church. Go into all of his things. Go into all of East Sussex. Go into all of the world. Go in fear and trembling because of the weight of the charge. Go in joy and celebration because of the promise of the Master. Go and speak the truth whatever the cost. Go and bind up broken hearts. Go and bring good news to them. Simon, this church is not perfect. Holton Baptist Church, Simon, is not perfect. Even together, you are less than perfect. Even together, you will make mistakes. This is the glorious messiness of the way that God builds his church. Learn to forgive one another and keep moving forwards. Always remember. There is a Redeemer, and you, and you are not him, but point to him, be faithful to him, trust the Spirit, continue to be shaped after the likeness of the Son, speak the truth that the Father has made upon you, and he will be with you always. What more do you need? Strange, you have like a dynamic sermon and then you go straight into a song. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to sing together um, Unseen Thorn, the darkest day, it's the power of the cross.
guess there's a lot of people looking forward to tomorrow night and a game of two halves. Uh, some of us have been incredibly, incredibly embarrassed by the behaviour of some people who call themselves fans. But I know that doesn't include you. <laughs> this game of two halves, though, the second half is much, much shorter than the first half. <laughs> for those who are worrying about the time. And so we come to this second part, the second part, the induction. You, the members of Holton Baptist Church, have called Simon to be a minister here. And believing this call to be of God, he is accepted and comes to be inducted to this office. So Simon, as you serve within this church community, will you commit yourself to both giving to its members and to receiving from them as members of the body of Christ? Will you lead and serve the fellowship in your calling as a pastor, seeking the kingdom of God, and always following our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church? As a disciple of Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Spirit, I will. Rachel, would you like to uh, tear yourself away from the kids away? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got anyone over here to <laughs> Rachel, you have heard the commitment that Simon has made to this church. Do you promise to encourage and support him as he seeks to exercise his ministry in this church and community. As a disciple of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Spirit, I will. Thank you. Can I invite the church leaders here, deacons and elders, please, to stand? Do you believe in your hearts that you have been truly called by God to work with this minister and with this church and congregation? We do you welcome and accept Simon as a pastor, and do you promise to honour and support him with your love and prayers, working together with him in your shared calling to witness to Christ in this place? As a disciple of Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Spirit, we And now, if you're a member of this church, will you please stand? My sisters and brothers, as members of this church, I invite you now to renew your commitment to Christ and his church, and to affirm again the vows of your baptism. Do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and do you confess Jesus Christ as your Saviour and Lord? Yeah. Believing that you are called by God to work with this minister, do you now acknowledge and receive Simon as your minister? Amen. Will you honour and support him, praying and working together in the unity of the Spirit as the people of God? As the of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Spirit, and now I invite all of you to stand. In fact, even if you're at home watching this, you might like to stand. <laughs> as friends of this church and as representatives of the wider church of Jesus Christ, do you support this new beginning in the life of Holton Baptist Church and Simon as minister here? Indeed. Will you all offer your love, prayer, and encouragement to this fellowship? in the days ahead. As the disciples of Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Spirit, we will. Thank you. Please be seated. Unless you're called Simon or Rachel. Rachel, just come and stand. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Simon and for Rachel. As 
Simon starts his ministry here, we recognize that this is a joint thing, that they come with family. And so we pray for them to know a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. We pray also for Daniel and Finn and River. Father, as a family, may the mountains be a place of joy and security for them. And on those occasions when ministry is tough, as we know it will be, may they be very aware of your presence, that they can not only laugh together but cry together, and know that you are holding them in your everlasting arms. We pray for them as a family to remain open and honest with each other. And we pray for the ministry here in this church that you will bless all the members here, that together they may see your kingdom come and your will done here in Holton. And Father, we also recognize that Jesus only has one church, even though we put our labels on our bits of it. And so we pray for the Church of Jesus Christ in Hastings. Baptists and Methodists and Anglicans, Roman Catholics, and URC, and Salvation Army, and King's Church. Father, we bring your church to you. <coughs> and pray that there may be a unity, an expression of love and joy to this community. That as the community sees your people working together, they will know that there is only one church, and there is only one Lord, who is Lord of his church, and indeed is Lord of the universe, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So we bless them, and we seek your blessing on all. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Simon, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Baptist Union of Great Britain, and on behalf of this church, I declare you inducted as a pastor to this church and congregation, as you lead the people of God and care for them, as you serve and pray for this community, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen.
justice saying to all. and down, taking us through. It's not to me. to be with you this afternoon. Thank you, all of you, for coming, whether you have come here in person, whether you have joined in on Zoom, uh, and I think I should probably especially thank uh, the people who travelled from the southwest who had a seven, eight-hour journey yesterday. Uh, I am incredibly blessed to have you here. There are too many people that I would want to thank, so I'm not going to uh, either embarrass anybody or risk forgetting anybody, but please know that I am so so grateful and so let me read a blessing over us all go forth into the world in peace be of good courage hold fast that which is good render to no one evil for evil strengthen the faint-hearted support the weak help the afflicted 
to honour everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And I'd like to invite you, if you are here in the room, if you are on Zoom, or if you're tuning in later, you can do this in the comfort of wherever you find yourself, to stand and um, share the words of grace together. They'll be on the screen because I quite often get them in the wrong order, so I thought I'd put them up there so you might don't mess this up. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.